Coming up on Tech News Today, pirates are helping Warner Brothers sell their stuff. We'll explain how that goes. We'll also take a stab at explaining the dispute between Level 3 and Comcast and how that whole hearing and transit system works. And Microsoft Connect Air Guitar is finally here, and we'll show it to you next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Friday, December 10th, 2010. Tech News Today is brought to you by Ford and Voice Activated Sync, featuring true hands free calling, turn by turn directions, 911 assist, and more. Available exclusively on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. And by Slingbox. Watch your favorite TV shows when you're away from home with Slingbox. Check out Slingbox at a Best Buy near you or visit slingbox.com slash twin. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. And I'm Jason Howell. It's your last tech word on the weekend. Joining us as they did last Friday. Uh, we have Will Harris from ChannelFlip.com. Welcome back, Will. Good evening, Tom. Thank you once again for uh, spending your Friday evening with us. It is, it is my absolute pleasure. Thank and you very much for having me back after last week. Over the protest of a small uh, number of the audience, we also have back Terpster from WickedLeaks.com. <laughs> Hi, hi, Tom. I'm simulating a satellite delay to make it sound more worldly. <laughs> Yeah, so if you could shout a bit more, it'll also sound like you're yes. doing a football match. We we are yes live on sat via satellites. <sighs> All right, uh, and thank you I, I also. Think that works. For, I think people like that think for spending good. a little of your uh, Friday evening with us. Uh, we're going to start with some non WikiLeaks news for once. By golly, there's good news in gaming. Uh, apparently, November uh, was the biggest month ever in terms of new physical retail sales, according to the NPD Group. It bests November 2008 by roughly $30 million. Uh, Nintendo DS led the way. Usually one of the handheld consoles lead the way. Lately, it's always been Nintendo DS. 1.5 million sales. The Xbox 360, the biggest large console sales, 1.37 million. So they've started to take the lead away from the Nintendo Wii. Although Wii's not doing bad, 1.27 million. It's bad news only for Sony. The PS3 apparently only sold 530,000. That's not That's good, incredible. That's an incredibly minor number. And this is this it, when Sony already was starting have a Blu-ray player. Is that what it is? Yeah, Sony has a Blu-ray player. Sony has uh, Netflix and Hulu. Sony PS3 is is a fantastic machine by all intents and purposes. It. It's Why amazing. Is it not I mean, selling? if you bought a Blu-ray player at the beginning when they first came out, there've been so many updates to Blu-ray since then. But the chances are it probably doesn't work anymore or it doesn't work with the latest ones. And then you've no, got no, like, it still you works. Know, I have an old PS3. It works fine with my Blu-ray. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. The, the PS3 does, though, however. Oh, I see it was cheaper okay. at the time and it keeps getting updated all the time. So it's, it's a winner. It's a real, real good one to go for. So it's crazy that it's bottom. Uh, it's certainly not the the fact that Black Ops came out. Black Ops is for all platforms. You can get freaking mm. Black Ops for the Wii. Uh, Black yep. Ops sold 8.4 million, making it already, after the first couple weeks of being out, the seventh best-selling game of all time. Uh, it looks like a lock to become the best-selling game of all time after the holiday sales are in from December. And what a, and what a great stat. Black Ops was 25% of all video games sold in November. One in four games crazy. sold in November was a copy of Black Ops. Yeah, of every four people walking into a, a game store, one of them walked out with Black Ops. Also, the fact it's the biggest entertainment release of all time. I mean, that, that still baffles me that it's bigger than, than books and movies, and it's yeah. a game. It's brilliant. Games are back on top, baby. They're out of the recession. Uh, and one of the reasons that, that the Xbox may be leading the way is uh, the accessory sales. Uh, Microsoft's accessories took 68% increase over last November and took 60% of accessory sales in total, and that's largely due to the Kinect. Yeah. I mean, what was it $200 for you guys? Yeah, well, uh, 150 I think. Oh, there you go. Well, I think it's about £100 over here. Uh -huh. um, and so, you know, it's, it's a big chunk of change. And so, uh, you know, and the thing is, everywhere you go, at least over here, it's all about the limited supply. 
limited supply of Connect. It's this year's must-have Christmas present. And so people are just buying them up. Uh, you know, it's a real big thing. And if you've got enough space, I reckon they're great. Um, do, I don't think I've got enough space. Do That's we declare our Sony PlayStation Move uh, the loser in the motion control battle between Connect and Move? Um, I don't know. I saw that, that sweet gun peripheral you can get. It's like the Wii Zapper oh, on Oh, yeah. Steroids. We'll talk about that a little later. You're right. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. So, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Will, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I think the Xbox is doing so well because, it's, as far as I know, it's still quite a chunk cheaper than the PS3. Yeah. PS3 is still the most expensive console on the market, right? And in a recession, you're not necessarily going to go for the most expensive one, especially when, you know, okay, each platform's got its exclusives, but the big games like Black Ops, it's like you can buy a $150 console to play Black Ops or a $300 console to play Black Ops? What are you going to do? Well, it's, uh, whatever, whatever we think, it's definitely good news for Microsoft and, and, and pretty much good news for Nintendo. Definitely good news for the gaming industry overall. Uh, yeah. The Media Access Project, New America Foundation, and Free Press all got together to write a letter to the FCC and the Department of Justice asking them to start investigating peering and transit agreements based on the dispute between Comcast and Level 3. Uh, they think that this is just the, the beginning of a problem with how peering agreements are negotiated and whether companies are acting in an anti-competitive matter. Uh, peering agreements are when two backbone providers uh, agree that they won't charge each other for, for accessing each other's networks. You send me traffic, I send you traffic. As long as the ratio stays at least below two to one, we'll just call it even. Uh, and of course, there was the the ruckus uh, last week when uh, Level Three claimed that Comcast was uh, unfairly charging them to send traffic to the Comcast network. Now, I, I kind of did, uh, looked at this Ars Technica article from earlier this week, and a couple other articles that uh, Chris Mitchell and Reed Fischler have sent me, and I think I have an understanding of what's going on. So, do you guys mind if I try to explain this? That's fine. No, oh, I'll please do. take a whiz or like go to sleep or something. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, Comcast <laughs> pays level three to access the wider internet. A lot of people don't realize this. Comcast already pays level three. Level three are the ones complaining that Comcast are charging them. But Comcast already has an agreement to pay level three. It's a transit agreement, not a peering agreement. So there's, there's a couple different types of agreement. This agreement says we pay level three. So that when one of our users types in a URL for a computer that's not on the Comcast network, it'll go through Level 3's network and get to that computer faster. So, for example, if I type in bbc.co.uk, Comcast will pay Level 3 to transit that request across their network, get to the BBC's computer, and bring that web page back rather fast. Now, separate from that, Comcast and Level 3 have a, what no, they did have, a settlement-free peering agreement so the traffic that originated within Level 3's network would go into Comcast network for free. So with Netflix now being part of Level 3's CDN delivery, that means when I wanted a Netflix video, it should have been free traffic going into Comcast. Comcast shouldn't have to pay for that. Uh, however, when they signed on Netflix, they realized they were going to need a lot more uh, connections, a lot more interconnections with Comcast to deliver all of this video reliably. Comcast only had customer ports available, though. These are ports that they normally charge people for because Comcast is getting so big, they're working like a backbone provider now. Level 3 offered to buy hardware for Comcast to, to make more connections. They said, look, we'll just buy the routers uh, for you to install. Well, those are like, it's like 50,000 bucks. We'll pay for that. And Level 3 offered to do something called cold potato routing, which means instead of a hot potato where you're bouncing it around the network, you actually deliver your traffic as close to the user as possible so that that traffic doesn't have to cross Comcast network. It goes right to the person uh, tra traversing the Comcast network as little as possible. That limits the amount of traffic on Comcast network, and it would save Comcast money. But Comcast said, no, we don't want you to buy us any, any routers. We don't want you to uh, give us any uh, beneficial routing, any cold potato routing. We want cash. No What's yeah. that? No carbs, just cash. Yeah, no potatoes. No carbs, just cash. Happy Mac in the chat room says, Tom needs to work at Mensa, and I agree. <laughs> well, now, is this all making sense so far? I think so. Second time through. Okay. <laughs> it does. Yeah, no. Well, I, if I there's, know if there's a pop quiz at the end, I won't guarantee the answers, though. Essentially, there's no other way to get to the Comcast customers except through Comcast. 
right? So they have a monopoly on their clients. But right. is that that strange? Is that that rare? Well, it's rare in the world. It's not rare in the United States. Uh, any ISP has a monopoly on their clients. In the United States, we have so few providers, though, that that monopoly becomes more important. Level 3 could take that Netflix traffic and route it somewhere else, and it would eventually get to the Comcast subscribers, right? It's not like if Comcast doesn't make these connections, Netflix traffic could never get to Comcast subscribers. The problem is when it's out going through other backbones, it runs into a bunch of congestion. It might not have the throughput needed. And so that video isn't as reliably delivered. And that's what Netflix is paying level Which when you're for. doing Netflix, right? That's yeah. the whole point is that you want your Netflix video to be super fast. Uh, mm. And at the end of the day, the losers here are surely Comcast customers. Exactly. And, and if, uh, well, actually, not just Comcast customers. If Level 3 decided to do that, which would probably violate its contract with Netflix, but if they said, no, we're, gonna, we're fine, we won't pay you Comcast, we'll send it somewhere else, it would actually cost Comcast more money because of that thing we talked about earlier about transit fees. The way Comcast pays Level 3 to transit network from, uh, uh, if, traffic from elsewhere, Comcast also play, pays other backbones. So if the Netflix traffic was going out on the internet and coming back to Comcast customers through other backbones, Comcast would have to pay a transit fee for that. So it actually costs Comcast more money, delivers worse service to their customers, like you're saying. Uh, but Comcast has such a bargaining position because they're so huge and because they have so many people and because they know their customers really don't have a choice. They can go to a DSL provider, and that's about it for this kind of thing. They, mm -hmm. They're willing to push and say, you know what, We're gonna, we want to start charging for this. Do you know what this situation needs, Tom? It needs some communism. It needs a little bit of socialism and government regulation just to kind of sort out these peering agreements and all these transit agreements just a little bit. Well, it and that's essentially like the uh, classic monopolistic position, right? That's essentially the uh, bringing us back to the story here. That's what New America Foundation Media Access Project and Free Press are saying. We need regulation. Uh, at the very least, it does sound like maybe it does need an antitrust investigation. This is monopolistic behavior that's anti-competitive. Commicast. Yeah. You want to call him Comicast? <laughs> the Soviet Politburo of Internet? By the way, like AT&T has also joined in on this on Comcast's side. So now Level 3 and AT&T are having a go oh, on, no. on blogs. Because they've all realized they can make some money out of it. Yeah. All right. Uh, before we uh, we get to we got we got some fun stuff later on here. We got uh, we got some some good uh, <laughs> Connecticut Attorney General action. We've yeah. got some. Tom, uh, that, was, that was fun, Tom. Don't do yourself down. Warner, I like the, how you kind of prefixing any WikiLeaks stuff with now. Hang in there, yeah. Because but there we, might be some WikiLeaks. We do up. have to mention some WikiLeaks stuff. We'll 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 make it quick. You know, half the people in the audience love this WikiLeaks stuff. That's why we oh, do yeah. it. But there are, we do get some people who are like, oh, I'm the so other tired half, of WikiLeaks. There's Wicked Leaks, yeah. which is leaks in the style of your favorite celebrity. So not, here, let's, not, let's run yeah, it down real quick. Uh, a new organization called Open Leaks is organizing. They are former WikiLeaks uh, members who didn't like the way Julian Assange was running things, and they want to create... What's funny, they're calling it open leaks. They want to create a more closed system so that anyone can <laughs> leak things, but it won't go out to the public automatically. It would actually just go to journalists and other interested parties. And there's no details how it would be accessed. But the idea is not to be so political about forcing the information out there the way Assange does. But surely it's just kind of just saying, okay, we're just we're going to leave this information on this table over here, and you guys do what you want with it, okay? Because if the press want to leak it, then we're okay with that. But yeah, well, we will nobody's, let nobody's choose what they want to leak. I think it's a smarter way to go because nobody's going after the press right now. They're all going after WikiLeaks. So if Open Leaks were doing this, it's the press. Yeah. Uh, the anonymous loose organization uh, is going to stop. Uh, doing denial of service attacks and start paging through all of the cables because there's been plenty of uh, of cables that haven't been made public. Well, they've been made public, but they haven't been made popularly public. They haven't been made aware. They're going to try to find embarrassing stuff in the cables and start popularizing them and calling attention to them. Uh, and uh, we we have uh, the Pentagon uh, is now banning removable devices from their computers. They had switched that. They used to ban removable devices. It was a real pain. They've gone back now and said, you know what? Removable devices, USB drives, that's what caused this whole thing. We're not going to allow those uh, on certain computers anymore, which makes now, life harder what if, what if, for people. If you had like a, a smartphone, 
Would that be banned? Are they already banned? Well, no, you can have a smartphone, but we're talking about if you're on a classified computer, you can't take mm -hmm. any data off that with a, with a USB drive. But will they know? Like, because I played uh, James Bond Bloodstone, and in that game, I had a, a cell phone that could wirelessly interact with any computer. Now, obviously, it's a game and it's James Bond, but are there things like that? Like, could spies just do that spies anyway? Spies can, can do it? lots of things that aren't. But you just talk to Joe Bloggs for now. the rules. The mm -hmm. rules are that you can't use a USB drive on those computers. Right, okay. Right? So if so, you're so sitting there, you're the, private the, Bradley the nice Manning, piece. and you're sitting there tapping away on your computer and there's a USB drive, now somebody's going to go by and say, what are you doing? That's not allowed. But of course, the thing about Bradley Manning was that he did it famously on CDRs rather than USB drives. Yeah, they would never know because it's in the disk. So you never know. That's also against the rules, but it's not as obvious. Uh, and finally, a uh, couple things here. Boing Boing reporting that an exclusive WikiLeak bombshell. Do we have this that we can put up on the? Uh... Yeah, let me see here. Um, you have to click oh, through. Man, this is a this is a this is a thick transcript here. Yeah, the, it is um, a little thick. So uh, I'll read it. Okay. For for some of the folks. Uh, yeah, I've, yeah, I've, I've got it here. The uh, line one says for folks on the audio podcast uh, of this tra of this cable, we're no strangers to love. You know the rule. Oh, wait a minute. You know the rules, oh, and so wait do a minute. I. L line number two says never going to give you up. We've just oh, oh. just been wiki rolled. We wick rolled. <laughs> Can't stand that. <laughs> uh, we just wiki rolled ourselves. Also, CableGateRoulette.com has been set up by the Atlantic. Uh, if you just want a random cable to be loaded up, you go press load a new story. And you can find out a Chinese research institute's unusual hmm. biometric device identifies humans by the way they walk. That's what's up right now. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure the cable gate uh, thing good. on the Atlantic is really working though, because I keep pressing load a new story and I keep getting the same one over and over well, again. Well, that's true randomness. You that maybe. <laughs> you know that's how you know it's random. Have you ever yeah. seen Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead? You keep flipping the coin. There's just as much chance of getting heads as tails. If you just keep getting heads, that's still random. Unless it lands on the side, which it never does. Rarely, it rarely does. This episode of Tech News Today is brought to you by Ford and Voice Activated Sync. If you haven't heard us talk about it, it's awesome. You can just get in your car, most Bluetooth phones connect right away, and then you don't have to take your hands off the wheel to send text messages, make phone calls, page through your playlists, skip songs, uh, receive text messages, have them read back to you. It's a true hands-free operation. So what is it, devices. Voice Activated? Yeah. It's voice recognition. So, Microsoft powers so, it. That's crazy. So you can just say, like, phone pizza place, and it phones the pizza place. Yeah. Well, anything in your address book, you can do searches, get turn-by-turn -turn directions. Uh, available like exclusively that. on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. And right now, they're doing the 2012 Ford Focus Global Test Drive. Your chance to get a sneak peek at all the new all at the all-new Focus. Coming out in early 2011, the all-new Ford Focus is a three-model lineup, five-door hatchback, four-door sedan, and a five-door wagon. Uh, and Ford would like to donate $10,000 to a charitable cause of your choice. Here's what you do. Go to twitfordfocus.com. Takes you to a Facebook page. Uh, and then you create a video that's less than two minutes long telling why your charity of choice should get the $10,000 and why you should win. They'll select a winner and a friend. So you, get, you win. You get to take a friend to Madrid to test drive the 2012 Ford Focus. You'll test drive the Focus at Spain's National Institute for Aerospace Technology. So you get to be where space rockets are. You get to drive a 2012 Ford Focus, and you get a free trip to Spain. It's pretty cool. You've got until December 31st, so go upload your video now and check out the other videos at twitfordfocus.com. Do you think in Madrid I would have to say, hola, call la pizza place, or whatever the Spanish is you for that? You could... Do it that La way. Pizzeria. You could uh, you, you could go. leave it in uh, in English though, and it still work. Oh, technology today, yeah. crazy, isn't it? So very, very powerful stuff. Is very done. Connecticut has issued a civil investigation demanding Google hand over the data they collected by their Street View cars. We thought we were done with this, uh, but Attorney General Richard <sighs> Blumenthal said in an emailed statement that they would like the data that Google collected in their uh, Street Views to be handed over to Connecticut so that the state government of Connecticut can look through it. That will keep it private. Yeah. Yeah, let's just give all our, gov all our data to the government. That's definitely going to help the situation. 
I don't understand. Yeah, all your data are belong to us, really. So Ireland is the only <laughs> country I've seen had a sensible response, which is like, we don't want to see this stuff. We don't really care that you did it. Just delete it. If you can confirm to us and we can confirm that you deleted all the Irish data, we're fine. That makes sense. You got some data? Get rid of it. Let's make sure it's gone. Why, why does the no government nonsense. need to page through it? Like there's there's yeah. got to be some... Uh, I, I'm not even sure I can go there, but there's some joke about like just verification of destroying of data in there somewhere with the Irish. <laughs> Trust to verify. Yeah. yeah. Too soon. There you go. Too soon. Kiss me, I've deleted. I don't know. If that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> just say whiskey and fighting and be done with it. Insult me. There you race. go. I tell you. All right. Uh, Warner, there's a great article in paid content today about how Warner Brothers is starting to get it. As far as piracy goes, they are now studying pirates. Uh, well, they still fight them in the courts and do all that sort of thing they're, they're famous for. But they are studying what pirates do with their content in order to figure out how to compete with them better. Uh, for, for one thing, they found out that the pirates actually buy their stuff. Nobody subsists on copyright infringement alone. So that behavior helps them to figure out, well, they're already buying some of our stuff. How do, we, how do we get them to buy more of our stuff? What is it they're buying? Why are they buying it? Let's figure out how to sell more stuff to the pirates. Uh, they found out that uh, females... I like you calling them pirates as well. It's... Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I kind of don't like calling them pirates because it's just copyright infringement and the whole pirate thing yeah. sometimes rubs it. But it's also kind of fun to just talk about pirates because... It is just, it's, it is it's nice. Visual. It's cool just to picture all these guys on their boat with their laptop out. You know, being like, yar, the Wi-Fi be quite poor this far out. And, you know, I think that'd be nice. The number of uh, of related, Warner Brothers related downloads on P2P are 65% films, 34% TV. So that lets them know, hey, movies are popular. We need to figure out what, what movies are popular and put more of those out. Jeff Robinov, uh, who's taking control of Warner Brothers film, wants to do more of those big blockbuster releases, which are always a big draw online, and figure out how to get people to pay for going to see those movies. Uh, and they're also noticing like, hey, you know what? If, uh, for instance, last year's preview episodes of Vampire Diaries are out on the uh, torrents, let's actually release that on iTunes a day prior to broadcast because the pirated version was flooding the market. And maybe we can undercut that and get people not to go get used to doing piracy and keep a couple of them in the, in the pay channel. Well, I think it's really interesting because the, the studio seems to be experimenting with a lot of different stuff right now. I mean, we see kind of the opposite in many ways. You know, we he heard a few weeks ago about um, the movie studios trying to do windowing with Netflix so that actually you kind of delay the release of stuff to online. And now they're sort of saying, oh, maybe actually we should try and speed it up. And I think, you know, they're still really in the middle of trying to work out what the consumer usage is of this stuff and how they can get around it. I mean, this is not the be-all and end-all. This is not going to solve all of Warner Brothers' problems, mm. but it's definitely the right direction, isn't it, Terpster, to have them well, say, you know what, instead of ignoring and fighting... Stuff, yeah. yeah, they should just call all their stuff. Like, I remember the film Triple X with Vin Diesel. Like, that must have been impossible to download because you could search Triple X movie, Triple X download, you know, whatever you want to type in. You're not going to find the movie very easily. So I would just approach it from that direction. Start naming movies. And just movies. name all my stuff vaguely porn related or vaguely common, way, or common search terms just look at oh, the common most com search terms yeah. exactly britney spears it's a biopic uh, starring you know um i don't know rob van dam uh as a you know struggling fruit vendor or i don't know that doesn't have any relation you've got another one of those movies that tries to retell the story of king arthur during roman times name it <laughs> brit nay spears ah oh, i like <laughs> That's very good. Uh, you yeah. can go with string Please expressions stay. as well. Yeah. Like Boolean <laughs> string expressions start to be the new the names. The new movie make and or. <laughs> Dash <laughs> and. Uh, All right. That'd be good. Pound sign. Sprint and uh, T-Mobile are uh, going to have announced that they're going to sell 4G tablets next year. Shocker. Uh, both carriers, however, declined to specify when the tablets would sell. What? who the manufacturer would be, what the <laughs> details would be, or who the partners would be. But hey... This is, this is the announcement of the week. I'm so glad to be on the show. Yeah. And I can look back and say I was there. I was, and you, can, you listening can say I was there. And you'll always remember where you are right now when you heard that they were going to sell 40 tablets next year because, well, exclusive. 
I, I just think it's funny. Plus, they're neither one of them His, technically 4G. No, works right oh, nor have they actually oh, said uh, anything, really. No. Can we can we roll this in with some of the other non-surprising sort of gossip and just say the 4G tablet will be the new iPad? Yes. Huh? Yeah, I like well, that. Huh? Like Let's just roll it all. It may up. or may not have an improved display, camera, and or be thinner. You know, it could be all of those or none of those. That's the announcement. No word on Boom. brand or platform. T-Mobile nope. is working closely with the majority of our OEM I'm going to say there's going to be an Android tablet sometime during 2011, which will run on 4G. They're taking, a, they're taking a page from our movie titling thing and just coming up with a buzzword to make in their announcement. Yep. <laughs> Here's our press release for today. Tablet. Thank you. That's, that's 4G. What it is. Oh, and, could, and also it's, 4G. It's like the, uh, you know, the, 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 the websites, the social media generator... Um, at this point, you could pretty much come up with the sort of tablet strategy generators like tablet, 4G, wireless, US <laughs> yes, network, right. Android, cupcake, Justin Bieber. Bieber. Justin Bieber 2011. Yeah. Ah, yes. Wouldn't it be great if he started dollar, 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 dollar. tablet? That's our whole CES press strategy right there. Oh, God. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> all right. And you will be trending all across Twitter. No one will be able to get away yeah. from your press release. Our Justin Bieber tablet 4G wireless. Uh, an article over on O'Reilly Radar makes the argument that just like free software helped drive development and innovation in, in software and web apps, uh, the falling cost of 3D fabrication equipment, 3D printers, could enable a load of new physical inventions, actual objects, uh, as people are able to buy these printers and start printing. Uh, the DIY CNC milling system, for, for instance, is only is less than $400. They say we're already this seeing the cool things that people have started doing with 3D Fab at the higher entry-level cost, and now that the prices are coming down, there's all sorts of stuff starting to end up on Kickstarter, iPhone camera mounts, prototype 3D uh, devices. Uh, anyone has an idea stuck in their heads can now print it out. What are you going to say, Will? I was just going to say, this is so freaking cool. This is honestly mm. my, you know, my story of the day. The ability to, to make this, you know, we've seen such a rapid explosion of, of media and sort of slightly intangible things based on the progress of technology. The ability to, to have people create m m more tangible things, cheaper and easier is, is honestly, it's like a manufacturing revolution. It's so exciting. Oh. I've got four words for you. T, Earl Grey, hot. Okay, that is, this is the future right here. Okay, I want to buy one and just say that I'll hook it up well, to we a connect. We can only print or, the cup okay. right now, but we'll get there, man. Just to, just yeah, hang if in you there. could if you could hook it up to your uh, to your yeah. Ford voice activated sink, that'd yeah. be perfect. Exactly, right there. you have that in the back. I say, uh, do you want a drink? Yeah. And they say, yeah, all right. Tea, oh, grey, hot. Prints out a cup, and I say, Oof. right now, if you go down the street there, turn right. There's a supermarket. Buy some. Fill up your cup. Awesome. Don't have any hot drink in it, though. It's printed. You'll melt it. You know, this, okay. I always Stuff. had a problem with the replicators, though, because the semantic structure uh, was not very good. You had to go in reverse directory order. Tea, <laughs> then what kind mm -hmm. of tea or Earl Grey? What kind of Earl Grey hot? You couldn't just say yeah. hot Earl Grey tea. And it got all On the other hand, that is kind of how you do a lot of things, isn't it? It's kind of like addresses. Yeah. It's like you've got, like, zip code, state, all right. street, number. Yeah, so it'd be, it'd like, be like saying, you know, 62246, Illinois. Well, actually, Illinois. Illinois, 62246, Greenville. And just going backwards. <laughs> All right, uh, we got the news fuse coming up. This episode of TNT, though, is brought to you by Slingbox. Slingbox lets you get your TV anywhere you go. So if uh, Terpster plugs in a, a Slingbox at his house... And gets all of his As great BBC and Channel 4 and B-Sky B shows coming over the line. We he just can, call it Sky. You can then uh, install software on his laptop. He can install it on his phone, iPhone, BlackBerry. Yep. And then he can come over here to San Francisco. And I'm sitting there saying, yeah, you know, we're not going to get that, uh, that new show you guys got. The Sherlock, that new Sherlock isn't out yet. Oh, here. it's good. And, Is it uh, and Terpster will sit back and go, oh, well, that's no problem. I got it on my DVR. On my Slingbox, I can watch it on my phone right now because everything you get on your home television, you can get over the internet with a Slingbox just for you. So check it out. Go to a store, pick up a Slingbox, bring it home, hook it up to your cable or your or your television service, hook it up to your internet, and then install the I don't the know apps. if I'm really easily pleased, but I've got Slingbox. And the first time I controlled my TV through my iPhone, 
I got really, really excited. I don't know if that's just me, but there's something about like I press a button here and over there it did something. Yeah. And in theory, I could be anywhere and it would still do that. You can totally mess with cool. your housemates. Oh, exactly. It's like a poltergeist, but he only controls technology. <laughs> Yeah, check not out. quite as stressing, but could work. Check out Slingbox at a Best Buy near you, or visit slingbox.com slash twit for more. Let's go to the news fuse. We kind of mentioned the iPad already, but the, uh, the old iPad has been out for like eight months now, so it's high time we start gorging ourselves on new iPad rumors, don't you think? Hot on the heels of yesterday's shadowy iPad cases with camera holes, comes a Reuters report that Chinese suppliers claim an iPad with front and back cameras that is slimmer and lighter and has a better display will come out in April. They've gone, they've been having the same PR firm as Sprint, haven't they? Yeah. It's just like, yeah, all of the words. That's what that is. That's good. Trust no one. That's Trust good advice for no undead one. and operating systems. Google Chrome OS chiefs explain in technology review that Chrome doesn't trust applications or users, and neither can modify the system. This means malware can't fool the system into doing things it shouldn't, making security and usability much better. That's cool. Uh, now, we talked about the PlayStation and the Xbox 360 earlier, and so what if PlayStation is in last place in the sales charts? They have got guns. Yeah. Lots of guns. Sony unveiled a sharpshooter attachment for the Sony Move, which features a machine gun design and holds the Move motion controller and the separate navigation controller at the same time. The mostly grey attachment offers, quote, easily accessible buttons, a responsive digital trigger, adjustable shoulder stock, convenient access to the navigation controller, and makes you look like a complete idiot. Uh, sorry, I might have added that last bit on. Yeah, I think I think you look like a complete awesome person. Idiot. Yeah. Yeah, you look the most awesome idiot, though, there's ever been. And anyone who, like, called you an idiot, you'd be like, yeah, how about now? I got a fake plastic gun pointing right at you. And they'd be like, whoa, okay, <laughs> that, that you're not kinda, an idiot. That thing looks like the Nintendo Wii stock thing I have. It's uh, Yeah, the zapper. Like it probably cost about a fraction. The, uh, the Many of you may not know this, but there's been a staring contest going on between Oracle and Apache over the fate of the JavaScript programming language and Oracle just blinked. They have asked the Apache Software Foundation to reconsider its decision to quit the Java SE -E Executive Committee. Uh, Apache Software Foundation President Jim Jagielski, Jagielski said, give us a reason why the ASF should reconsider other than please. They're, they're not very happy with Oracle. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, handbags at dawn. I like it. Uh, double click, the Google-owned ad technology has been uh, distributing malware in an online ad uh, served through a number of websites, according to a security researcher. The malware infects users who visit a page where an infected ad for Target is displayed. Uh, users don't even have to click on the ad to be infected. They just have to visit the website when the ad appears on the page. So, um, I don't know. Whose fault is that? Is that Target's? Uh, I'm going to blame Target. No, no. Okay, it's, it, actually, Target is the <laughs> one person who's not at fault here because they just had their image stolen. By the way, I said JavaScript by accident. It's Java, not JavaScript. Makes a difference. It's a big difference. Drunk <laughs> dialing from Germany may get cheaper. Thank goodness. Well, you know how many times we, we've all been there. You're in Germany. Mm. You want to drunk dial some people, but it's too expensive. <laughs> well, if you're in Germany European and making commission. a phone call... It's all drunk, darling. Yeah. That's the problem. Um, the European Commission announced plans to eradicate roaming charges uh, around European states by 2015. In a consultation paper launched yesterday, the EC invited consumers, businesses, telecom operators and public authorities to evaluate the EU's existing roaming rules and to share their ideas on the best ways to boost competition in roaming services, which means it may be possible to travel all around Europe and call wherever you want for the same cost as calling locally. Very exciting. It's one market, right? Why not? As well, long as they do it for data, I don't mind. But they'll still get me on the data, I'm sure. Yeah, no. It'd be you know, still extortionate, data. but oh well. Yeah. Uh, the internet got a little more secure today after global registry VeriSign announced the deployment of DNSSEC for the .NET domain. Uh, that's the largest domain yet to become enabled with the security technology. DNSSEC is a key upgrade to the internet designed to protect against man in the middle and other DNS attacks. Uh, it's been a long time coming. The first TLD to deploy it was .org back in June. 
Owners of several security sites have discovered huge bumps in traffic from Iran as a country tries to deal with Stuxnet. How do you say that? Stuxnet? Yeah, Stuxnet. I'm going to say Stuxnet. Yeah, why not? Um, our traffic from Iran has really spiked, said a corporate officer, who asked that neither he nor his company be named. Iran now represents 14.9% uh, of total traffic, surpassing the United States with a total of 12.1%. Iran says they have the problem under control. So uh, no worries there. Yeah. They, they, they always say that. Although, if Stuxnet yeah. was in, uh, infecting a bunch of users' computers and not the nuclear computers, you'd still see a spike in traffic. So I guess it's hard to say. Connect hacks are taking over the world. Uh, we got another one today. This is Air Guitar using the Connect. Right? It's a dream come true. It is a dream it's come beautiful. true. In fact, I'm surprised if there isn't a game already underway to do this. Uh, but yeah. rather than wait for somebody to develop it and publish it, uh, we have uh, some hackers who have figured it all out. Uh, the source is Chris O'Shea at chrisoshea.org. And there it is. Air guitar on your Connect. It, it seems too good to be true. And the thing is, I wonder if... You know, if like Activision or Harmonix or something made this game like a Guitar Hero rock band, if we'd ever actually see it, because the big thing about those games is they sell you a load of plastic peripherals, which, you know, rack up the cost for them. And on this is literally your imagination and possibly a poorly rendered guitar on screen. Well, so now, now, we can, <laughs> now we can find out if Veronica Belmont is truly the air guitar champion or not. That would be that would be better actually at those uh, at those festivals where they yeah. test it. Well, that's cool. The bit at the end where it puts now you on actually stage. have to play music. Yeah. yeah, I mean that guy though when they don't have a guitar and he's just on a stage yeah. bobbing around. That really brings home how sad it is. <laughs> how awesome. I still it is I for still the audience. Would love it. Exactly. Well, I like, no I like the idea that these uh, guitar that the music games going in two different directions. There's removing the guitar and making it just air guitar, and then there's a new rock band which is replacing the guitar with a real guitar. Mm -hmm. Whichever way you want to play, you can yeah. you can go either way. There. On to the calendar. Mozilla is rolling out Firefox and Thunderbird updates today, so if you're in the market for those, check them out. Uh, coming up this Tuesday will be the December Patch Tuesday for Microsoft, the most bulletins ever, hot on the heels of last year's most fixes, most vulnerabilities ever. So Microsoft doing record-breaking Patch Tuesdays these days. Uh, Facebook's Hacker Cup is open to entry starting December 20th. So if you want to live that social network movie moment where you're hacking against the clock, I don't know if shots will actually be involved in the Hacker Cup. Probably not. Uh, but get your entries in December 20th. Microsoft is set to detail their second Windows Phone update at the Mobile World Congress in February. Uh, th there's supposed to be one in January. Paul Therott mentioned that on Windows Weekly this week. Uh, we will get the cut and paste in January, it looks like. Microsoft is expected to open up several new APIs in February that will allow for greater multitasking, in-app downloads, and better customization for end users. But look for that in February at Mobile World Congress. And, of course, there's lots of ways to be a part of tech news today this holiday season. One is to be Terpster and be on the show. Another would yeah. be to be on the show as a listener in our open mic episode. And a, a last one would just be to find one of your favorite moments of the show from this year and uh, submit it to us. You can find all those ways at bit.ly slash TNT Holiday 2010. On to our voicemails, which are actually video mails today. Uh, an anom a person who wants to remain anonymous because they actually bought this as a gift was kind enough to take a video of themselves unboxing one of the only 200 Steve Jobs figurines in existence. These were pulled by Apple. Apple said you can't sell these, but he got one. AT&T, this is the MIC Steve Jobs model um, that I just got that Apple took down a couple of weeks ago, I believe. Um, it, when compared to the iPad Touch third generation, it's fairly big for its size. Mm -hmm. It looks realistic. You got the little tiny iPad, t t uh, iPod, uh, iPhone right there. Uh, you got Steve Jobs' face. He's standing on the Apple logo. This standard black, black shirt uh, and jeans. I just wanted to show you uh, one of the less than two hundred of these that are available throughout the world. Wow! You kind of like that head to bobble, don't you think? Yeah, oh, exactly. And you just be able to flick it every time Apple does something you don't like. Flick it, Steve Jobs. Just flick. But I don't know. I, I think Steve should really take a, a big glance at himself now and realize that he does wear 
only, you know, he only wears the same clothes the whole time. And uh, it would be nice to see him come out. I imagine like, I, I don't know, Joseph from the Old Testament in a Technicolor dream coat and just come out in this, this magical flowing coat. And he's all like, oh, yeah, iPod Nano now available in a million colors. And then you're like, oh, sweet. <laughs> but, you know, he should just wear just something different. I don't know. I feel like I should buy him a, like a turtleneck in a, in a slightly lighter shade, like maybe Salmon. gray. Yeah. Hey, Sam, or Sam will be, I mean, that might be a step too far. But, you know, just give him sight to have a bit of choice. Yeah, I wonder for if a man he that professes to, afford, to think different, you know, exactly. he's got a pretty, uh, a pretty, you know, pretty same same similar think different, wardrobe. Not dress different. <laughs> it gives you Very more true. time to you think, think different yeah, if you don't bandwidth for, the for thinking. Yeah, you don't spend so all the time thinking Apple about what you're wearing. What didn't they like about it? Was it the likeness? Was the fact he's standing on an apple? What was it? It was unauthorized. They were like, you can't, you can't do that. That's yeah, but it's a nice homage, surely. I would love to be immortalized in bobblehead form. Are they getting paid for that homage? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not too fussed about that. I mean, he's You're got not. enough money. They've got enough money. They should just chill it's and enjoy the, the You ride. don't get rich by letting other people take your money. <laughs> there you go. There you but go. if you're already rich, then you should probably be okay with it. You don't that stay rich mind. either. All right. They stay rich. We got one they more uh, video mail to get to. Uh, this one, a reaction to uh, why Google Web App Store might be good for consumers. Hey, Tom and Gang, L595 here. I just wanted to respond to Tom saying that he couldn't understand why the Google Web App Store is better for users. And for me, there's two reasons. Firstly, instead of them being spread across hundreds of thousands of websites, they're all going to be consolidated into one place, and they'll even be split up into categories to make them easier and easier to find. Secondly, if you do a search on Google or anywhere else, the only way to find out which ones are better than the other ones is to try them. Whereas in a store you can have user reviews, so you know that there's no point in trying a three-star one if there's a five-star app. Cheers, guys. Love the show. Well, okay. Those are both, those are both <laughs> very good uh, reasons, but I don't think they're entirely absent from the web as it is now. You can, you can find user reviews on, on downloadable software. There's lots of places to do that. Yeah, all the time. I mean, like when you download stuff off CNET, it's always got the little stars next to it. Yeah, right. Download.com. Yeah. 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 Exactly. But there's generally, there's generally not reviews for websites, though, right? In terms of like web apps. Uh, well, there's, there's some, there are some, well, maybe like, there's a few blogs, but you're right. It's not, it's not like there's one big one. This is the best one yet. Okay. I'll give you that. Definitely. Uh, and let's finish off with an email from Rinus Brunt. In, uh, he's also Rinbrand, or maybe he's Rinbrund in the chat room. He's from South Africa. He says, hey, Tom, I've got one point for you on the uh, Chrome OS store. OS agnosticism. When you buy a web app, it works the same on any operating system. Chrome OS, Windows, or Mac, as long as you're using Chrome, the Chrome browser, mm. your app would work. It's a little bit. I'm not of... using Chrome. Is that a schoolboy error? Should I be using Chrome? What? What are you using? I'm using Safari. Safari? Well, that's yeah. the same engine as Chrome. Am that's almost allowed? like you're using Chrome. Well, that's the thing. I don't know. So, so would it look the same yeah. for me? Uh, no, yeah. You've got to use Chrome if you want to use the Chrome web store, sadly. Got to download that then. Are you using Chrome, Will? I'm using Safari as well. Really? What about you, Jason? Well, yeah, but, well, because it's, it syncs bookmarks with iPhone. Mm, yeah, it's just it done. Is. It's on I, there. I use, uh, I use multiple. I use Firefox and Chrome pretty much regularly. And then Safari if I need yet another sandbox that doesn't have me logged into something that I need another login for in a different browser. Yeah, I, whatever, <laughs> Jason, you filthy man. Uh, I taste a little know. bit of all of the browsers, all right? Yeah, I'm okay. still on Mosaic myself. So, uh, <laughs> I need to upgrade. <laughs> Every so often, I like to kick it a little IE6 style. Yeah. Just to go yeah. see just what to, it looks like. Just to live dangerously. Yeah. <laughs> Everything renders in text. Am it's I going to get a script attack? Ooh, so exciting. <laughs> All right, Will Harris, thank you so much uh, for being on the show again. I know you're going to be on Twit this week, right? I am on Twit on Sunday. It's, it's the Will Harris zone. Yeah, absolutely. And, and of course, uh, tell people about Channel Flip and anything else you got going on. Yeah, really exciting. We just won um, two of the sort of um, iTunes Apple Rewind Award thingies. 
for the shows that we do, which is quite exciting. The uh, best so, of, the uh, best of, two, yeah, two the best yeah. of the, the sort of um, the UK version, which is great. So um, go to channelflip.com and watch us, and you can also just uh, search Channel Flip in the iTunes Store and get some of that lovely podcasty goodness. Yeah, the iTunes podcast guys were nice to us this year too. We got we got one of those here in the US. Terpster, thank you again as well. And uh, what what would you like to promote today? Um, just go along to wickedleaks.com. Um, it's currently pointed at my uh, Twitter page, uh, kindly donated by Nick Donnelly, um, because I think we are going to try and put up some, some cool pictures of leaks. But that's um, L-E-E-K, so. right? not yeah. L-E-A-K. Yeah, leaks. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, leaks. Right. <laughs> what do you mean? Ooh. Anyway, so yeah, check it out. It's all good. Um, I haven't got any podcast awards, but you know, the night is still young. That wraps up the weekend for us, everybody. Thanks for uh, being with us. Leo Laporte is going to be back if you've missed him. He'll be here Saturday, and he'll be here on the Tech Guy and Twit, and uh, all those shows will be back in the house. I will be back on Monday with Tech News Today. You can find us at twit.tv slash TNT. Email us, tnt at twit.tv, or give us a call, 260-TNT-SHOW. We'll see you then.